Today on Daring Abroad, we're at Kenyatta University's School of Engineering and Technology. We're here to visit Dr. Victor Mongera, the first aerospace engineering lecturer at this institution. Dr. Mongera left Kenya for the United Kingdom in 2005, but upon completion of his studies, he felt it was wise to come back home and share his experience with the young generation. Welcome to the show. What I saw out there, what is being done, is something that I believe we can do here in Kenya, in Africa. Yes, it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be cheap, but it's achievable. It's something that uh, at some point we should be able to say that there's no reason for a student to go abroad because we are able to develop that content here. But you see, if you don't have control of the aircraft, how are you going to orient it? Dr. Victor Mongera has been lecturing at Kenyatta University for about four years now. Stagnation? Stagnation. all the words now. He teaches aerospace engineering, a course that is not offered by many learning institutions in Kenya. So what is it all about? Aerospace engineering has two broad areas, aeronautical and astronautical. Now aeronautical is what we see on a daily basis, uh, flying within the atmosphere. You have your aircraft, your civil aircraft, those that carry passengers, you have your helicopters, military jets, anything that operates within the atmosphere is aeronautical engineering. And astronautical engineering, on the other hand, now we start talking about space travel, anything that goes past the atmosphere. Dr. Mongera is one of the few aerospace engineers in the country. He received his training at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. But what inspired him to enter into this field in the first place? When we were much younger, we used to have these uh, parades, when we used to have these celebrations, Kenyatta Day, Moi Day and so on. And we used to, used to run outside, all of you, and you would hear the jets passing by, very loud jets, and uh, as they head off towards display. And of course, as children, you're all very excited. But I remember for myself, when I first saw one of those passing overhead, I instantly knew I want to do that. I remember we used to go to the Wilson Air Show, where we used to, you would go around, see different planes parked, and I remember they specifically used to take you up for 10 minutes and it was quite the experience to just be in the air, to be lighter than air in this big aircraft with many people. This fascination motivated a young Victor to put more effort in his studies. And because at the time, aerospace engineering wasn't offered in any institution in Kenya or the region, Victor set his sight on eventually daring abroad. And in 2005, upon completing his high school education, the old boy of Hillcrest Secondary School left for the United Kingdom. I remember I was uh, very, very terrified of uh, going to the UK. And I remember on the first day when I arrived, because we arrived in London and then went straight to Bristol. And actually, um, I think I was regretting my decision almost instantly because this, of course, was not Nairobi. Everything was different. The weather, the way people looked, the accents, I didn't understand anything that was being said. And I remember thinking, I am very unprepared for this. These worries were however short-lived. As soon as someone steps into the university lifestyle, the first few weeks, then suddenly these fears actually turn to excitement because you come to learn that as much as you're scared, even those who are locally there are as scared as you are. And uh, as much as you feel unprepared to do this course, Actually, uh, local students are more unprepared than you because as much as you feel that uh, you might be unprepared, you might not be as smart, you're still willing to give your all towards this course, which a local student might not necessarily be up to doing. So Victor got down to business and focused on his studies. They do have a lot of exposure. They have companies around uh, the University of Bristol and those companies are able to give the students quite a good experience. And that is a rare experience that um, even other countries like Germany don't have access to. He, however, did face some difficulty, especially when it came to finances. I remember there was a time that, um, because I had spent a long time in the library, I passed by the shop, I looked at my money, and he said, let me just get a Coke. And uh, when I got home, prepared everything for the next day and everything, then uh, just before bed, I finished this Coke. And because the gas was full in the stomach, then you're able to very quickly sleep. And that's how you get through the day without, uh, <laughs> without any kind of money.
Abroad, um, what makes it very real to you is the fact that um, when you're having these challenges of money-wise, there is not really that culture of someone to bail you out. Uh, you know, when you're studying in Nairobi or in uh, Mombasa or whatever city you're studying, there's always someone you know. You know, you, you can always, the Kopesha lifestyle, we, we've sort of used to it. So you can somehow make it to the end of the month and find some 500 shillings or 1,000 shillings. In abroad, no one will ever give you that break. It's, it, there's no one you can really approach and ask for money. But Victor didn't let this distract him, and after a while, he became accustomed to life abroad. He was even able to find employment in the United Kingdom and worked for Rolls-Royce and Augusta Westlands, a company that builds helicopters. And all this exposure uh, helped me realize that actually um, what I was very interested in is knowledge creation. And knowledge creation is something that is, is, is uh, considered more in academia and particularly in research. Armed with this realization, once he completed his undergraduate and postgraduate degree program in 2009, Victor immediately enrolled for a doctorate degree in the same institution with specialization in unmanned aerial vehicles, commonly known as drones. And the reason I chose that particular field is because they are becoming quite uh, vital in very many areas, not even just engineering, even um, in agriculture, even in uh, construction. And it is this that led him to come back home in 2015 upon graduating. I kept feeling that um, I have a lot of research experience here and I have a lot of knowledge. And um, I wanted that knowledge and research experience to be used within Kenya, my home country. I wanted um, to come home as a thought leader as someone who is able to impact what I've seen out there, the experience not only in the research, but also in the job market, in the industry. On his return, Victor felt that the best way to make an impact was by molding young minds. Thus, in 2016, he joined Kenyatta University as a lecturer. We have this pattern coming up. So what can we say this is point? Which point is that? Our younger generation actually have proven um, within my time as an aerospace uh, lecturer and as a researcher, I found that the young people actually are very bright people. They're very, very bright and very focused. And given an opportunity, they are able to do quite a lot of work. And we were able to see this firsthand as the first ever graduates of the aerospace engineering program took us through some of their innovations. This is a JFK water drone. Mm -hmm. Uh, for surveillance and communication. Mm -hmm. uh, the initials here JFK mm -hmm. stands for our, our three names, which is Generic, uh, Felix and Karuku. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our uh, quadcopter is a, a four-rotor drone mm -hmm. which can fly autonomously yeah, without um, control by any a man or something else. Okay. Yeah, you just control it using the controller we have here. Since taking leadership of the department, Victor has been able to bring positive change to the school. We managed to attain equipment for teaching the students, uh, which was not there. We also managed to develop uh, relationships with industry, um, with uh, the army, who allow our students to, to go there for training and uh, development of hand-to-hand -hand skills. We also managed to develop um, attachment opportunities for the students, internship opportunities, and we also are uh, developing MOUs with different uh, industry leaders so that now when the students are graduating, the pioneer class, they're actually very happy to be aerospace engineers. In the couple of years Victor has been back, he has indeed achieved a lot. He, however, attributes all this success to his experience abroad. When I started uh, teaching in the university, um, one of the things that I usually do and insist on doing is uh, using a lot of technology to teach. So all my notes, uh, all the material I prepare for the students is all created digitally and it's sent to the students digitally. And of course I also use projectors and uh, slides and additional support material to help the students understand. Because the aim of the, aim of the, the lecture is not so much to just talk for an hour, but it's for the student to absorb that particular unit that you're trying to teach. 
And that is something that I believe I, I picked up from being taught abroad. When we were learning, our lecturers specialized a lot on developing our critical thinking methods, such that you're not so much memorizing the material, but you're more understanding the underlying theory, so that when you are looking to solve a problem, you're, using, you're trying to figure out what particular solution do I need? How will I solve this problem? And that's something that I've taken from my uh, studies abroad and brought to Kenya. But it is not only in academia that Victor is championing change. He is also working on a project that will see drones redefine farming practices in Kenya. So I'm currently working on a design that um, not only will it do the usual monitoring um, that we use for agricultural uh, practices, but it'll also actually interact with the farm uh, to be able to do things like plant seeds, to be able to uh, spray crops. You just take that level, you use the Bernoulli's equation, and you calibrate for speed. Dr. Victor Mungere's dream is to see Kenya reach its full potential. He adds that for this to happen, the young generation has to be supported and empowered. And when I asked him what advice he had for them, this was his response. The one thing that I picked up from being abroad and the one thing that is still very, very good for someone who is looking to go abroad is that the experience you get out there, the exposure, it's something that can't really be substituted. Dr. Mungera's story is clearly one of brain gain and his advice is that if we can fund research at learning institutions and our young generation, then goals like the Big Four Agenda will become a reality. Until next time, I'm Michael Zimantin.